All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and let's get right into it. NBA 2K23. This is a little bit more serious video today, man, because I really want the devs and stuff to see the video, and I want them to really think about some of the things that are being implemented in the game because I can see, like, I should be a game tester. And the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of times you can tell me something that you're going to put in the game and I can tell you how people are going to exploit it immediately. That's what I do for a living. I'm, I'm a network admin and I look at people trying to exploit our network for a living. So like that's why I can do, do this with video games. I can tell you that may not be the greatest idea because people are just going to try to exploit it. So that's what we're going to try to do today, man. We're going to try to make a little bit more serious video, man, um, and all that good stuff, man. I had a long talk with my guy Anonymous and all that today, man. And like like I said, this this video, I, I hope it reaches the devs and I hope they take some of this stuff serious and I hope they really listen to what we're trying to say. But uh, without further ado, man, let's just get the video underway. Now, we got a lot of things to talk about, a little bit of time to talk about it, and we're going to try to keep this thing under 12 minutes, maybe even under 8, but... That means that we got to get right into it, man. So right off the bat, the boy Swante says, new NBA 2K23 news, a W or L. And, uh, you know, he put this thing. I say it's a W, and most people say it's a W. And then you got uh, a couple of people saying not happy yet. I understand that not happy yet. They got that face of Bruce dropping off. Like, no more real player percentage. I'm happy. I'm happy as hell. They bringing back skill, skill back. And um, what they're talking about with that is they're talking about a tweet that Mike put out yesterday. Uh, a lot of people were wondering. A lot of people act like everybody says, I don't care about real player percentage. I don't want real player percentage. It got no place in the game, blah, blah, blah. But there's a whole subset of people that actually rely on it. They use it a lot. Like uh, like uh, they were talking about it last night. People were like, I never really, it does not bother me if somebody uses it because if you play even a little defense they're gonna miss but on current gen you could fade with it and and things like that it just made the game it just made the game kind of kind of toxic i guess you would say but the biggest thing about real player percentage is like i said you could fade with it on current gen and you didn't even have to even know anything just be out there and shoot but you're not gonna see it a lot in the park you will see it in the park some but the place you're going to see it the most, my boy T just dropped a major video on it. You're going to see it in the in the old gym a lot, and you see it in the wreck a lot, especially when people are just coming out there and they're just playing they're extra casual, trying to have fun. But for those people, Mike already didn't drop the hammer and said, real player percentage will not be a valid option for online games in NBA 2K23. And, uh, you know, some people says the wreck heads, the wreck here is not gonna like this exactly. That's what I was saying. A lot of people in wreck did. Never knew you could use it online. That's right. Appreciate it. A lot of people appreciate it. Uh, I guess he had he messaged uh, him in December. Uh, requires uh, what's it? One request requires shot time and layups to be online. Uh, real player percentage isn't an option. So that's something that he asked for, and he's saying that that happened. This can fix paint, uh, paint mashing cheese and stuff like that. So you know. It is what it is. He asked for it. We got it. At least Mike is listening to some people and all that good stuff, man. I love it. It is what it is. My boy, Anonymous 2K TV. Like I said, I was talking to him. Uh, hashtag assist gang. Like teamwork and defense. You'll love the channel. Exclamation point. New YT for the new YouTube video. Link down in the description. He says, so tired of, of so tired of current gen getting the exact same features as next gen. Remember what they said last year. Current gen couldn't get next. Uh, couldn't get next gen build system. Now somehow they have it. Yeah, next they're gonna have the city. And then he actually doubled down on that and said the community always lose when it comes to two, to this two K. Fix the game. Stop making cosmetic changes and fooling the community. Then he tripled down on them boys and he said what he said. He said complained all year about blow buys a couple of 2Ks ago. That was 2K18, and now they're excited about the bully badge. You can't make this up. Uh, okay, I'm done. That's what he said he was done. And if y'all wondering what the bully badge, we got, we got exclusive footage of what the bully badge will look like in NBA 2K23, and we serving it up for y'all right now. This is your boy Ju said, my max strength 99 driving dunk Hall of Fame bully badge on 2K23 gonna be lit it. And that joker says, boo, get out the way. Right. Look at that thing. Well, hey, look, that's hey, this might be what the bully badge. Boom! He blew that boy up like uh that, that was look like uh if you are a if you are a uh fan of the the, the Saints, 
Don't it look like Porter getting stiff on him? And then he just took on, took out. I mean, uh, you know, he got some retribution a couple of years. I mean, you know, a little bit later when uh, when he picked off uh, what's the name? But don't it look like that stiff on? Like, get off me! Get him out! Get away from me! And then he just go to the rim, man. But that's crazy. Like, like, hey, that might be what the bullet bag is gonna look like, man. It could be that in real time. And then, uh, you know, you know, like he said. <laughs> And then last thing Anonymous said was so tired of trying to fight the system when it's surrounded with it's supposed to be sheep, sheep, uh, and paid actors. Ooh, that is some strong stuff down my boy. And like I said, this is one of those things, man, where I'm just I just feel like he's right. It's it's like we asked for certain things and like in 2K18 we got tired of the blow buys. If you had strength, you really wouldn't gonna get the blow buys as much. They couldn't blow by you as much, but then they took strength out. And everybody just had strength in that game. You didn't have to pay for it anymore. Strength was, I mean, the blow buys were actually in 2K16 and 17. If you put, well, and I know it was in 17. I don't know if, if 16 had strength. But in 17, strength was actually an option. Yeah, and I had a point guard. And I had um, 51 strength. I had maxed his strength out just to see what it would do. And I would get that ride animation where he would like like blow by and like slap his arm, slap the dude's arm off him and go to the rim. But then in 2K18, everybody had strength. So because everybody had strength in 2K18, everybody was able to take advantage of that animation because they just literally put it in the bill. They almost was making your bills for you and you didn't have a chance to mess up your bill and do silly stuff. So um, more or less, that's what he's talking about. In 2K18, we had those blow buys and there was, there was really nothing that you could do at all about those blow buys. And then, we ended up, uh, you know, they, they they started making the body ups and then they, they tuned the body ups and then we got better body ups, better cut off animations and better all that stuff. And so it resolved itself a couple of 2Ks later. But now they're talking about the bully badge. And even in this game, the blow buys are really bad because you just, it's really hard to bump people. Last year, you could get bumps. I could get bumps, but you had to double tap the left stick or left trigger or whatever to get them. And, uh, and then you could press the uh, the reach button at the right time and it'll give you a good cutoff animation. This year, it's almost impossible to get that, uh, even with, even I mean, especially with the little guys. And I think that's why I'm saying, when I say that 2K puts badges in the game or there are things in the game and then they have to later go back and define them with the badge. What's that badge that they said they're putting in the game? It's a playmaking badge. It's like uh, anti-clamps or what? It's pretty much the anti-clamp where you can't get bumped or if you get bumped. We're gonna look at the badges in a second. Anyway, Mike came back and he says, Driving dunk rating dictates how easy it is to block dunk attempts. Flashy dunks boost your takeover meter faster uh, than basic ones. Back scratches, windmills, tomahawks, and flashies are much harder to dunk, I mean block in general. And so more or less what he's saying is, I know that's kind of confusing, but all he's saying is with back scratchers, you can literally have somebody with a 30 dunk holding their hand up. And if you did a back scratcher, you can have a 99 dunk. I got my center. If he did that, he was either gonna smoke the dunk if they were in the area or they were gonna block it. And so it was like his dunk rating didn't matter for anything. And like anybody could block black scratchers, tomahawks and all that. You can literally block it with your body. He's just saying it'll be easier to pull those off. Not that they'll be harder to block than regular dunks. It's just they'll be harder to block if the degree of difficulty to block those dunks right now is 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 like a zero because there's no degree of difficulty now the degree of difficulty difficulty is going to be like a five and that's going to go by their driving dunk rating and it's also going to go by your block rating so if you don't have a high block you won't be able to block those dunks and that's the one of the first things that we're going to see where it's like say goodbye to defense because defense is going to be tough like i understand that you should not have a small guard in there blocking shots or you know because like a five eight could hold his hand up and, and literally block a windmill it was happening and that's i guess it is sort of realistic but at the same time it is annoying when i got a 99 dunk for some reason same thing where i can't i can't i'm i'm six nine and i can't bother uh because a mismatch expert i can't bother this five nine shot but i should be able to shoot completely over him and i can't do it you understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, you can do that to some degree in the game, but not really. Uh, up next, like we said, Mike says, most of, most of it is not, uh, let me see, somebody asked, what was the question? Okay, what happened to Mismatch Expert? And he said, was it replaced with something or reworked or into another badge? And Mike says, most of it, not all, oh, not most of it all, turn it back. Mismatch Expert was, rem was moved into playmaking. It helped smaller ball handlers blow by taller defenders easier only blow by vertical or horizontal 
uh, to talk to me. So that's what that's what the ISO God Sensei was saying, bro. This is where we're getting down to where I'm saying say goodbye to defense, man. Because listen to me, listen to me, and listen to me well. Mismatch expert is a badge that sounds good in theory. In theory, it sounds good, right? That you're gonna be able to blow by bigger defenders and stuff. This should not include bigger guards. It's not a mismatch if you're 5'8", and I am a guard also, and I'm 6'5", and I'm playing defense. So that's not a mismatch. A real mismatch is how we have exploited the game over time, over all these times, and we have power forwards and centers trying to defend guards, and they're able to stick with them and stay in front of them. That's what a true mismatch is. A mismatch is not a 6'5 guard on a 5'8 guard. That's not a mismatch. Mismatch experts should not pop on guards, but it does. It has popped on guards all year this year. Every single time I got a 6'5 guard, he shoot it. They say he got mismatched. Boom, mismatch expert works. You watch somebody stream. I watched Quay stream. He played with his 6'6. Mismatch expert never pops. He played with his 5'8 or 5'10 or, you know, whatever. One of the shorter guys, mismatch expert pops nearly every shot because those guys are taller than him. I feel like if you are a defensive expert and you are a point guard, shooting guard, a small forward, and you're six, six, seven or below, I think mismatch expert should not pop because that's not the true definition of a mismatch expert. It's when a center, and to me, it's when a center or a uh, power forward tries to play defense and he ain't got no business out there. I, that's what it should be. And if y'all don't understand what I'm trying to tell y'all, it's this. Right now, I would rather have mismatch expert as a shooting badge than as a dribbling badge in its current iteration. Because if it pops on guards also, the issue is going to be they're gonna have tight handles, ankle breaker, and mismatch expert. And just because you're 6'5", you're going to get broken over and over and over and over again. Now, he can break you and he can go to the rim, or he can break you and he can go shoot the ball. Well, right now, the only thing we really have to worry about is tight handles. If we have to worry about mismatch expert allowing him to go by bigger guards, the game is going to be in trouble. We're going to be right back to small guards again. I'm hoping that they, they, they learned their lesson this year and mismatch expert does not pop on guards anymore. Please, Mike, please listen to me in this video, man. You know, it is what it is. Also, we talked about how defense is calculated. And like I said, and y'all let me know if what I'm saying is making sense. He talked about how defense is calculated and how the ball. We, we already know all this stuff, man. It's crazy that, no, but now we understand why when you put your hand in somebody's face and your hand might move at the last second, you think you're there, but you're not. And then sometimes you think you're not, but then you end up getting there because right at the end of the shots, you jump and your, um, your hand gets in his face. To me, that almost encourages bad basketball because if I'm there, I'm there. My body is there. I'm right on top of his feet. He can, he got no room to take the shot. I'm there. You know, now in real life, like I said, I'll take that shot and I might fade back and I can hit those, but that ain't the first shot selection I'm trying to take. So, you know, it is what it is. Limitless range. Limitless range has the has the ability. It can really impact the game. You got limitless range and they're going to be able to stack that with amp. The only reason that we could even stop people a little bit this year was because they didn't have limitless range. They had to mix it with Chef or they had to get around the three-point line and they had to toe that line. Imagine defending a 5'8 and you got to pick him up as soon as he crosses half court. It's going to be impossible to defend him. And he got mismatched expert, tight handles, ankle breaker. He's going to kill you. You're going to have to pick him up at half court, and he got double shoot and take. You, you, we, we gonna have no chance, bro. Anybody that's up, it's gonna be an ISO fest with five eights again. If this is how it is, even if they can't even dunk, if he mismatch you, and maybe he break you hard because he mismatch you. Pause. But he breaks you because he mismatch you, and then he goes to the rim. He can lay it up like it doesn't matter. They already told you you're not gonna miss layups, but if you got a low, if you're wide open, it doesn't matter what your layup uh thing is. You're gonna make it or your dunks or whatever. So that's, like I said, man, please, please, it's in the game, but just implement it properly because because this works, uh, limitless range is gonna work on every shot, plus amp, and uh, I think that, I think Circus 3 is gone, but we gonna check that out in a second, man. And also, the last thing, we are gonna leave that for the end, man, but I just wanna kinda go through these badges real quick, and then we are gonna let y'all get up out of here. Slithery, we already said it. Paint Masher, bro, come on, bro. Paint Masher, increased ability to finish layups inside over defender. If you don't have, 
if you don't have, let me hit that right there. If you don't have interior defense, you deserve to get killed. But how bad is that going to be? Area wizard uh, ability to, uh, we don't care about alley use. Bully. We already talked about the bully badge, man. That's going to be people running straight through people and going in. If you don't have defense in your game, it'll be fine and you won't care uh, because you're going to get killed inside. But that's a two. That's a two. We don't care about twos. It's not a big deal. It's, it's really not a big deal. We really, I'm really more worried about these these six, the, the, the five eights coming in and, and killing us again because you really may not be able to defend them with how this stuff is, man. Shooting, like we said, look at this shooting. A bill, uh, Agent three, Agent don't even play the game no more. He told y'all that, but hey, they trying to honor him. I feel it. It might be Agent zero or Agent Agent zero, you know, uh, Gilbert Arenas, but whatever. Anyway, ability to hit difficult three point shots, so they're gonna be hitting face again probably. All right, mini magician. Nobody cares. Amp reduces the shooting attribute penalty when fatigued and when moving excessively prior to shooting. That was already in the game. It used to be a badge. That badge used to be called Tireless Shooter, and now it's back. Claymore. I don't even know if we're going to even use this badge, bro. Like, because if it's like spot up was, limitless spot up, I mean, spot up set shooter was this year where you got to wait three seconds, I don't even understand. Increase the spot up shooter's ability to knock down, catch and shoot. So you'll be able to stack this with catch and shoot jumpers uh, the longer you remain stationary prior to shooting. But there's that with or without the ball. If it's when I catch the ball, I got to be be standing there. That's, it's useless because we gotta you got to get rid of that ball as soon as you get it. Comeback kid. We already knew the bomb boost was in the game. Improve the ability to shoot perimeter jumpers when trailing in the game so when you're losing there bro you 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 really just say goodbye say goodbye to defense you're not gonna be able to blast the you're not gonna be able to blast kids no more bro probably if they take good shots but they're gonna now they're gonna hit everything when they behind but we already knew that was in the game because what would we always say when you're winning by 10 the other team can take any shot that they want to and they're gonna hit it it is what it is. Hand down, man down. This has always been in the game. You don't put your hand up. The dude can most most of the time is, is, is pretty much green. He ain't have his hand up. You shot the ball before we got there. What I used to say, what's my favorite thing to say? T, put it in the comments. Ball gone, player. That ball gone. You're not going to do nothing with that space creator. Formerly a playmaking badge. Now it's a shooting badge. Dang, that everybody can get it. Allows boost. To, allows you to boost the ability to step back and jump stop and cause the villain to stumble. What if that, what if they use, so now they're going to be using space creator, tight handles. Now they can, now instead of putting on more, like they already going to have 90 shooting badges. So now they're going to be able to put on all that. Like I said, limitless range is going to be crazy. We already explained how that's going to do it. Killer combos improve the dribble effectiveness to, um, to size up, to size up dribble moves. Uh, last year's quick chain. That's, they're going to have that. Clamp breaker. That's what it was, the anti-clamps. So you're not going to be able to rip the, <laughs> the win one-on-one. -on -one. You, so you can't, you're not going to be able to bump people. You couldn't bump people this year. It's already in the game. They just defined it as a badge. Mismatch expert. So they're going to have killer combo, clamp breaker. Killer combos, clamp breaker, clamp breaker vice grip. Uh, vice grip is for us. We needed that as bigs, though. Uh, and mismatch expert. Killer combos, they're going to be mixing you up. Clamp breaker, you can't bump them. Then, then you got mismatch where... They gonna break you down if you're taller, if that's how it works, bro. And then look at this stuff on defense, bro. Like, what, what, what we get? Anchor, box out beast. We already had box in the game, so I mean, it is what it is. Workhorse, um, that's just hustler. Um, the glove, that'll be cool, I guess. That's ball stripper, really. And then challenger. That's what we get. The only thing I'm trying to say is, man. The game has a lot of good stuff and I see a lot of good stuff, but I see some things that are also very troubling. I just hope that that's not how it is. But Mismatch Expert has to has the, the potential to be very game breaking. Y'all let me know if y'all see it like I see it or maybe I'm tripping. And then the other thing is, man, maybe, I, maybe I'll talk about this tomorrow, but that adrenaline thing with the stamina bars and all of that, bro, I really hope that that's something that doesn't start taking impact until you cross half court. Because if it takes impact before you cross half court and you only get three boost, three speed boosts for the whole possession, I'm a lot that you can make anybody that presses, now you're gonna have a reason to press because anybody that presses, like why are you pressing? I'm making him use up all three of his adrenaline boosts before he cross half court. Now he can't do anything. That has to be, that has the, the ability to be very detrimental and game breaking as well. So if you're a bad player or if you're just a mediocre player, you're going to hate playing the game because a player like me, if, you, if you're just a regular guy, I'm gonna make you speed boost three times before you come across half court and then what's gonna happen? Now you're gonna be slow 
and you or you gonna have to pass the ball. So, like I said, a lot of this stuff it just depends on how they implement it. It's got the it's, it's, it's very good ideas, but it's just how they implement it. It just makes me wonder how it's going to work. Anyway, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I'm not being too pessimistic, but it's just like, bro, this stuff. I, we got to think about this stuff, and 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 that's probably why the guys were like the game was hella slow when they were out there because they were using all three speed boosts before they were crossing the half court. But probably didn't even know what those bars were, so they didn't know. But let me know what y'all think down in the comment section, man. I'm gonna holler at y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Town. Guys, speak. Guys, speak.